to stick to is just like keep it as simple as possible so when you're looking at something it's like okay cool uh, what's the user stat here and if you're just like on you know you're you just on dolphin bench you know mysql workbench and you look at it and you're like oh there's like a five here cool but like oh why are there two values or something else um just kind of the least surprise sort of thing and versus like you know like leaving a big comment you're like hey be careful about this um basically we do a vacuum operation after a while and remove old records and we just write to the end of this thing so you always like select the last one based on you know order and that's the thing kind of like how um, redshift works where it just like inserts crap at the end of it and um, then it does a vacuum step later to clean up all the old rows so there's definitely definitely stuff like that So key on ID stat name values. All right, cool. So this will need to be a parameter parameterized call. Uh, what was it above? It's also been a while since I looked at all this. Since when I'm working on the game, I'm basically working on the game, and I don't do like actually doing the online server work is I don't actually do it all that often. All right, so we're going to do four. Um, every stat, S, U, R. We're going to set callable statement. Uh, so let's see, we got strings for the first thing uh, and then a long for the last one So that'll set all those and the results. Um, it's not a query though. Do we have anything that's just like parameterized thing? Yeah, Adam, I'm I'm trying trying to make a game. Uh, so I guess we'll get a result set, but we can completely ignore it. So. Like our base DB call does create result sets and you know does the thing, but we're not doing anything with it, so I think we can just safely ignore the result stuff here and just chuck it out. And uh
All right, so we'll do that. Then we need to do our left join on this thing. So what is it? Um, so we create our temp table, we insert into it, and we're going to select from the temp table and left join on the ID. I am not the best at all these. I'm not the best at this part of database stuff. All right, so it's going to be select star from temp table. And because we're going to grab every row. So we're going to left join with um, the original table on the, um, what is our actual key for the user stats? I mean, it's a compound key, so it'll be you know, like count ID. Stat context and stat name, uh, and um, how do we add the two together? Fuck! I don't even know how to do this. Why am I so dumb? <laughs> Like I want to join the two tables and just add two common two things together. So I guess there's a sum operation. God damn it. Uh, I don't really understand it. Probably the weakest part of my server engineering stuff is the uh, the database stuff like this with specific SQL calls because most of the time I've been doing real simple shit. And when you're trying to do like more efficient things, I'm just not really sure the best way to do it. And you could do like some sort of optimistic logging, but I don't want to do any round trips to the database or any of that sort of shit, so.
Okay, so it's basically, is it something like update, original table, left join, like, temp table, It's not even an update operation though. It's like it's like replace into original table, left join, temp table. So it's like on original table dot count ID equals temp table dot account ID and original table dot stat context equals temp table dot stat context and original table dot stat name equals temp table dot stat name We would want set uh, original table dot value left join might not be the right one like it might be a a right join or something uh, we want what temp table dot account ID it's going to be original table dot account ID stat name and then I guess we're supposed to also set this will be original table dot stat value equals the uh, original table stat value plus the other one I mean, is that ah, fuck I don't even know if that's the right syntax what am I trying to do I am trying to insert a number of rows into a temporary table and then basically push that into the main table and when there's a you know a duplicate add the two numbers in the stat value together
So let's just play around with this. Okay, so that's what we got in user stats, um, and then we got user stats temp, and let's just do one, 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 one. One, one, one. Alright, so when we load this up, we got one, one, one there, and that sort of thing. So if we rerun this script, we'll get that. Alright, so we need another one. And it's basically going to be what we've got here. Okay, so I need to start off with um, select star. Let's where. So it's going to be uh, what? user stats temp. Left join user stats on uh, user stats dot account ID. No. Left join. Yeah, mine. So we got stack context. Alright, so that selected everything from here, so I guess what we want to do is something like Missing closing parentheses. How do we use, is there a sum here for this? 
What does that look like? Can we just do an ad like like that? Interesting. So user stats temp is one and user stats is zero. So when we add them, we get this. Okay, so we want to replace into user stats this. So we have our select, which does that, and this is our replace into. So we ran our replace into, and we do a select, and it's now two. All right, so that's our SQL query that we have to run, uh, is this um, replace into user stats, select user, st user stats, temp account ID, context, blah, and then add those two together from this and then left join on the account IDs and everything else. So let me just look up the left join to make sure it's the right join that I want. So they got these handy diagrams online. So left join is the left table and yeah, so it's going to take the left table's primary keys first and match those to the right table, which is exactly what we want. So we have the SQL. Excellent. I just had to go bang it out and do it. So that is our dude right there. Took me a while to come up with it, but that's what it is. And uh, this is going to be our upsert call. I'm going to call it adjust cert. Because this is a temporary table, it should do fine. All right, so the adjust statement. It's going to be this guy. And let's kind of pretty it up. So replace into, and then we're going to want the what stats db dot get user stats declaration. Glad we don't have to worry about string builders anymore. Replace into this. Uh, replace into user stats. Select. Um, how do we reference temporary table? Create temporary table, temp table. All right, so it's just going to be temp table, account ID, temp table, temp table. Uh, this should probably be in quotes, so it's going to, I guess temp tables we don't have to do anything super complicated with. Uh, we'll get our...
It's probably better if I just, like, this stuff's already going to explode if I change the data structure, so I don't have to worry too much about setting up my nice compile time uh, checking for this, so I'll be a little lazy. So user stats, account ID, oh man, we got it. Alright, let's just do it. Let's make this shorter. All right, so that is our adjust statement. So we have our adjust cert call there, and that's the final part of our transaction. So um, let's grab it. So trans dot add uh, attach call, and let's do temp trans dot attach call uh, inserts. And adjust to search. All right, and then we got our transactional results. All right, that is our, that's our call. That is more complicated than I thought it would be. I'm just going to jump in here and beat up Jeff. <laughs> Is it? Is it no, uh, no contact? Really? I joined for a no contact match? We got jumps at least. Mm. 
Whose side are you on anyway? Oh, we cleared it. And I'm I'm trying the keyboard controls. Oh man. Keyboard controls are rough. Ah, oh, we got it out. Nice. I'm good. That's the that's the winning match. That's the winning that's the winning score. Crap. <laughs> Everybody's just all over that. Almost. Yeah. Right in there. Devs represent. You got nothing, Jeff. You got no game. You got two minutes for this not to be a shutout. Oh, oh, damn. Oh, what? That was a lucky shot. Oh, we got the clear. And I'm playing on keyboard controls. Yeah, that shot in. <laughs> That's the wrong way, Jeff. It's the wrong way. Oh, ah. Oh, that clear. Oh, <laughs> mushroom. Oh, almost. Very good. GG guys. I'm glad I could drop in and defeat the undefeatable Jeff. Alright, I will be right back.
Yeah, no contact can be kind of rough. Because you just want to punch people. Alright, so that's all the stats calls. And that's pretty cool. We actually got this down to just a couple database call round trips and nothing too insane uh, all at once, which is excellent. And I guess I'm getting a little bit more SQL practice with uh, some of this here. But that is kind of cool. Like, we can just keep running that thing. And that guy keeps incrementing. Yeah, five and zero and everything. I should check if. A new user stat actually works. So we want like account ID one, stat context three, stat name three, and stat value one. Let's uh let's make sure that works. So it says it does. So we should now see three in there. It's set null. Okay, um, All right, let's see if there is a sum MySQL. What is that? What does the MySQL sum function do? Sum quantity as blah. All right, let's see. Add two columns together. SQL null. All right, how do you sum two? In the case, if the column has a zero value, you're fine. My guess is that you're problem with a null value. In that case, you need to use is null column zero to ensure that it is always zero. Okay, so this needs to be is null zero. Okay. Um, incorrect parameter count in the call to is null. Um, what? All right, the other thing is coalesce. So coalesce actually works, but is null doesn't. Yeah, okay, that that's what? That's crazy. All right, let me look up the coalesce. All right, so the stack overflow, because what you do with programming, like I saw that that GIF is like you don't know what you're doing, so like the next thing you do is pull up stack overflow. Alright, so coalesce is identical to is null being the name of the function, but that's not true because we just saw that is null didn't actually work. Coalesce is ANSI standard and is null is not, but more important the fact that coalesce is more flexible. Is null only work with two parameters. If the first parameter is null, then the value of the second parameter is returned, else the value is true. Coalesce will take two to, to n parameters and return the value of the first parameter that is not null. When there are only two parameters, the effect is the same as is null. Yeah, so this is just better. Yeah, coalesce. I'm glad I went and looked at that real quick.
All right, so we have this, and this right here has to be a coalesce stat value, comma, zero. try to power through some of these. Alright, so now we're on to fetching results. So let's see what we got here for fetch results. Uh, fetch results is we have users, context, result names. Again we have the users and blah. Alright, so we got all our result names and everything else. So what are we going to do for this? We're going to craft another call, aren't we? Which is, we want where all these are the same. Alright, so this is going to... What do we do for these others? We just add them all together. So what do we got inside of the fetch? We have stat user result. And in the database for user results, we have a result ID and account ID and all that. Okay, so it is account ID, so this will be stats. Let's see, this is user results bar names. So for every user, we'll do that. So if uh, request uh, result names does not equal null, let's attach those.
So it's going to be Let me see. Okay, we are we are doing it properly. Mushroom Hall is an excellent one v one map. Yeah, I I definitely really like it. Like even that two v one was pretty good, and the triple jumps that level likes to contain the ball real well. So triple jumps has actually got some nice airtime with like ceiling bounces which is something the other levels don't have is that nice that kind of low ceiling to in the middle you know so he doesn't like go into the freaking stratosphere and just bounces and then slowly falls down It's kind of funny how your preference for languages changes as you work in them. Because now I'm just <laughs> like, man, Java, the Javas. I'm getting Javid with all this typing. Also fucking mushrooms. I don't know. Those mushrooms those mushrooms are excellent. Like I really like that that um <laughs> that they bounce off of it. I think it's great. Like you may say, God damn mushrooms, I'm like, yeah, mushrooms. They actually did something. Cause you get like a nice a nice uh, clear going and then bam, it's straight back to the people who are following you and you're like, oh crap. So you gotta not, you gotta pay attention to you know your clears, not just your, not just attacking. You actually have to like clear it in the right direction. <laughs> you both ran into it. Just <laughs> yeah, I was finding when you know we were playing it for like five hours the other day that I was just automatically jumping and just like perfectly going over them a lot of the time. But then like that one time, you like you misjudge it. You slam into it and then you jump into it again. You're just like, oh, God. God, I'm so stupid. <laughs> yeah, so it works. So this is going to give us a, a result. error okay so what are we returning here we are returning a stat user result array well, let's see fetch stats actually returns a stat array okay okay we're gonna have to do the same thing that we did with this other stuff so we're going to need our response object. All 
So there's our response. Chip the pole. Oh yeah, and um, I have fixed a bunch of small bugs in the current build um, that aren't on, you know, live. But one of them was the air control does not actually match the uh, the speed on the ground. It's, the difference is your maximum speed on the ground is 25,000 and your air control is 20,000. So what that means is when you jump, you slow down and um, you do not accelerate your top speed when jumping and in the air is slower than your top speed when you're on the ground by a small margin. So people were correct. I went ahead and put it back to 25,000, but um, if Adam wants to go change that back, it's as long as it's not too much of a difference, I don't think people will notice and get upset with it, but I don't think that was intentional. Otherwise, I would have left it. All right, so the other thing we did was this like fetch stats, fetch complete stats, and then fetch stats history. And what we've got right here is we've got the historical results. For these things, but um, it's not good enough. Why do we need the result ID? Is that the actual primary key in the database? The interval ID is part of the primary key, but where the hell's the result ID? It's not in the. It's not in the table. Did I screw that up? Oh, I'm looking probably at the wrong thing. This is user results history. Well, user results history needs a result ID. So why is that screwed up? So this would be user result. We have a result ID here. Then why isn't it? Okay, yeah, well it's not here. So that's the that's the history. Wait a minute. All right, stat value things. Historical results and data up to ten per unique key per user trimmed inline as results are inserted. User result history has the result ID. Now this is all right. 
The history is a separate piece. So it's user results, and user results are the things that we are, that has your actual results in it. So both, okay, so your basic results, including your results history, is all your like previous results, like the last 10 attempts at something are, are in the database, but um, we prune them, so we just need to write new ones. So fetch results for a user will do that sort of thing. All right, nice. Um, what we would want to do is we have fetch results. I want a little bit easier function for this. Hmm. So fetch all the results for all these users that are available in their results stuff, which is fine. 